Gimmicks. Gimmicks are the tricks that people use to entice people to do business with them. And with Power Rangers, it's no different. It's that device that adds functionality to their gear and a fun way to differentiate one series from another. And some say that gimmicks can break a toy line in a season, and you know what? That's completely true. What was once a way to make a toy line a little more collectible has turned into a cash cow of shooting out as many little trinkets as you can in a single episode. And week after week, we would see a new power up and a new little trinket, a new gimmick be tied into to a new Zord or just whatever the lesson of the day was, it would be shoved in our face pretty hard. But hey, 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 here's a little commercial, you know, it, it's this this gimmick, this little toy thing, it's in a toy shelf near you. So let's talk about some of the good gimmicks out there and of course, some of the less desirable ones. It's the history of the gimmick, let's check it out. Yo, what's up everybody, it's Este here, and today we're talking about the many, many gimmicks seen throughout Power Rangers history. And we can't talk about the gimmicks in Power Rangers without talking about the base, the blueprint, the one that didn't really start at all, but kind of, you know, laid the soil in it, the Power Coins. You know, in the original Super Sensei series, the Changers, or what we know as Morphers, were kind of like more wrist thing, they would put them on their wrist, press a button, and boom, they become a Ranger. But with Jew Ranger, you know, they were like two separate pieces, there would be the Morpher, and the individual item that would be inserted in the morpher that would differentiate one ranger to another. Those things were called dino metals and they would have this symbol on for each of the rangers. So, you know, the T-Rex, the mammoth, the pterodactyl, etc. And with the use of this coin, they would morph up into their ranger form. So, you know, in Jew Ranger, we did have six for, you know, all six of the Jew Rangers. But in Mighty Morphin, we had like 13. There were six of the original coins, right? There was uh, a seventh one for the Tiger Zord, and there was also six additional power coins uh, representing the change of power in season three, you know, when they got the Ninjetti stuff. Also, there were three additional power coins seen in Dimensions in Danger, you know, when Tommy got his Master Morpher, we got one for the Zeo Red, Turbo Red, and Dino Thunder Black. So even though this may not have been the first ever Power Rangers gimmick, it definitely did set the base of what was to come. And at that, we get Wild Force and the Power Animal Crystals, which are transparent little spheres with, you know, little wild swords in them. They're very cute. And here's where the functionality comes in because they can be placed in that crystal saber and they can summon the wild swords. It's genius, right? You'd have little spheres of each of the individual rangers and their swords. And, you know, the kids, you know, they'd go out and buy them, collect all the spheres, you know, because, you know, they have the little sword inside them. They're different colors. It's genius. And toys were made for these power crystals, but, you know, they weren't really highlighted as much, I say, in the beginning. They weren't really integrated, per se. But, you know, what was integrated the next season, Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Because after the power animal crystals, we had the power spheres, which were like little discs. There are little discs that the Rangers would put inside the Megazord cockpit, right? They would put it in this little slot and out would come a sphere like you know sphere like the animal crystal but it's not animal crystal because instead of having a cute wild sword inside it would have a weapon of mass destruction it's genius in toy form because you can have this actual little sphere right instead of having just nothing inside just a little animal you can have something useful that you can actually switch on between toys and that is a weapon and it did integrate that in the toy line pretty well putting it in with those megazord packs it was more than just the gimmick uh it had functionality with it even ninjacon the american exclusive megazord got power spheres too if you don't know what that is by the way i did a video about it it's very weird also, there was a Power Sphere shooter too. So, you know, they actually had toys dedicated to the gimmicks of the show. However, gimmicks really died down after that and we didn't get anything, you know, not well, for like half a decade or so. But here comes Power Rangers RPM with the engine cell, which this is the true start of the gimmick here because these are stuff that can power up their weapons, their morphers, or their megazords. And there were like megazord cells, you know, one through 12, which are for each of the individual swords. There were also morpher cells that the rangers would insert into their morphers to morph. There were three types of those. And there are also stuff to use in their weapons too. And this this is when it truly gets genius because you can integrate this into the morpher, you know, and also have them in the Megazord side. But of course, as you know, Power Rangers does come from Super Sentai Japan. They have their own toy line that's made separately from the American toy line, the Japanese engine cells, which are called engine souls, because the, the cars had eyes and actual souls. They had electronics they could light up and make sounds. These ones for Power Rangers RPM were just plastic hollow discs. Literally nothing, they're hollow. I'm just waving my hand right now. Some of them even had like failed graphics in the front. I remember one engine cell had like the number one on it and it just had a white box around it. That was an L. 
in graphic design. So yeah, the Power Rangers toys would have to kind of change uh, in to differentiate from the Sentai version to basically fit these now smaller cells. And you know, it worked. When I was a kid, I was like literally eight years old watching RPM. I saw these cells and I literally want to collect them all. I don't think I have any. Hey. Hey you, real quick, before we continue, have you subscribed yet? I know a small percent of you is subscribed, but I ask you this, all right? Subscribe and join the E-Squad today to join the best Power Rangers fan base out there, okay? We got Power Ranger videos uploaded all the time. I don't want you to miss them. And you know, hey, E-Squad comment of the day. If you leave a funny comment down below, put E-Squad minute. I might just put you in the next video, okay? So sign up. But the plastic rain will continue into Power Rangers Samurai and the use of the power disc, which in my opinion is the worst gimmick ever. It's a spinning thing that you would put on the spin sword and it would make like a little animation. It's mid. It's really mid. It's supposed to really symbol power. They didn't really use it much in the show. They had some for the Zords, some for the auxiliary ones too. They were barely included in the role play items. Uh, and uh, more like the second season included them because with the black box and whatnot, they were just thrown in in the training gear packs. Remember those when you can just like have that mask and that little tiny sword? Those were fun, I miss those. But it wasn't until 2013 we got to the peak of the Power Rangers gimmick and that is the Power Rangers action card game which was a tabletop game created based on the power cards of the season, which were the main access keys for the Mega Forces Rangers' various weapons, Zors, and especially their powers. Even Megazord combinations and final attacks had their own dedicated card to it, so you know Saban and Bandai America were like, oh, we're gonna get money off this one. The thing about a card is that it's so thin and so cheap to produce that you can include it in everything. And that's what they did. Action figures, Megazord sets, training sets, roleplay items, Zord vehicles, everything included a card with it. You can even buy sets of cards with various legendary rangers on them between five different sets, as well as various promo cards, as well as even McDonald's exclusive cards. And all these cards have sounds in the Ghost Same Morpher. What was really good about the Ghost Same Morpher of uh, the toy is that it could differentiate teams as well as different colors. So I can put, I don't know, Mystic Force Green and I can put in a say Mystic Force Green and like, you know, that's cool. This gimmick was the best in functionality because you can just go have fun and collecting cars, which who doesn't love collecting stuff, especially cars. It's so easy, especially so easy to manage and, and all of them could have individual sounds, which was honestly the best part. However, there was some confusion next year because, you know, Mega Force split into two seasons, Mega Force, Super Mega Force. They dropped the action card game and went into what so many fans were waiting for, the Ranger Keys, which are essentially little mini figures of the Power Rangers. But you can flip them. There's a key, insert them to the Morpher, make a sound. Go Kyger, of course, being one of the most successful toy lines in Super Sentai, Band of America wanted to recreate that and, you know, did their own version of the Ranger Key, which was... Um, different from uh, the Japanese version in the sense that they're much tinier, but they can flip by themselves. Now the Japanese couldn't do that. These can flip with a little spring on them. Uh, some became loose though, and some can't stop flipping. I had to put tape over lots of mine. I'm just shooting my finger now. The power of springs. However, uh, just because they're bigger, um, they couldn't really fit into much. They weren't included in the action figures anymore. You can only find them with the roleplay items, Megazord sets, but we had the introduction of the gimmick exclusive pack. This was the first time we had toys based on the gimmick by itself and we would have three released in a pack differentiating from the Japanese version. They would just have straight up team packs. Band of America didn't do that. They wanna squeeze the money. You know, not even McDonald's had, you know, those Ranger key sets. You weren't gonna get those for free, all right? We're gonna squeeze this toy line and maybe collect as many sets as they can. And they did. The problem was is that there were so many repaints, you know, uh, repaints, translucent, metallic, literally ranger keys that would just end up in a bin especially those free ranger keys that had like no paint on them there are also just problems with exclusivity and just trying to complete teams pop morphica had an exclusive set of ranger keys some of those wouldn't be released till later they had to extend the super mega force toy line into dino charge just to finish off some of these teams and not every ranger also got a ranger key too by the way speaking of dino charge though Dino Chargers, which are batteries that would unlock the powers of the Energems, the source of the Dino Charge power. Now, even though we never got Energems released as toys, we did get Dino Chargers. And boy, we got a lot of them because Dino Chargers, like Ranger Keys, would also get packs just for them. In the past, we had three Ranger Keys. For this Dino Charge era, we would have two Dino Chargers and a little tiny plastic figure that the dino charger could be in i thought those were stupid you'd have one regular dino charger one fossilized dino charger it, it was really bad 
for completionists all right and the the dinosaur figure would barely even be painted just like the base color and like the eyes or something convention packs would also release with exclusive mighty morphin chargers with toys r us even having an exclusive charger for the dino megazord and differences from the japanese still continue these were much smaller but these had like more space for pictures this like because it had like transitioning from dino charge power up to not power up these american version of the dino chargers also just weren't glittery at all to be honest this was the start of the decline for the gimmick toy as there weren't many legendary ranger packs to draw collectors in to start off with as those didn't really start into season two with those dinosaurs for season two now looking more glittery and translucent i mean i guess they try to switch it up the japanese version of the toys when you put the dino charger in the megazord it would unlock because of lights and sounds and you know here we go the bandai of america megazords don't have that so you would put them in the megazord and it would do like some basic little thing it wasn't really worth it now comment question of the day though if you were to make your own power rangers gimmick what would it be let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below and leave a like to lock in your answer 1500 likes and i'll do more videos just like this one now ninja steel was the final year of gimmick packs because we had the ninja power star and boy did i hate these no sounds no lights like the japanese versions uh and these were made out of foam basically to protect people from what throwing them they were small and they were useless the sounds they would make from the ninja steel morpher i forgot its name it, it pointless how they did the packs for this season that they would combine stars that we would see in the show along with legendary ranger stars but even then with all these different legendary ranger ones when you put those in the morpher it wouldn't unlock like a specific sound so what's the point just to have a star with an old ranger on it the ninja stars were insanely unpopular and for that reason there were a lot of packs that were straight up just unreleased never saw the light of the day with different battleized red rangers different megazords never saw him and you can tell how bad that was for collectors super ninja steel had like six cancellations they also just generally released less packs that year i mean it was also the final year that bandai of america had the toy lasts before it switched over to hasbro so when hasbro took over the show to adapt tokame sense like go busters into power rangers beast morphers they noticed hey this show has no gimmick let's give it one they had morph x keys and you know even though these keys were very much smaller than the ones seen in the show i do like those they're, they're kind of cute mostly because they were of course included with the morpher with like a try on key but they were included with the action figures once again and they actually did unlock individual sounds in the morpher they had ones for the main rangers the beast bots and even villain keys for being an original gimmick that the show made up then not even the show integrated that much these were pretty seamlessly like moved into the toy line i actually really like these and they would continue this trend with their 2021 series power rangers dino fury and now these dino fury keys don't flip like they do in real soldier they had just like a glittery picture with how the key is supposed to look like i don't like that but you know they gotta make it smaller to fit into the morpher and they would include them to the action figures and the role play items and they do unlock exclusive sounds of the dino fury morpher so i guess that's fine but hey hasbro's taking some cues from bandai here let's see where hasbro might go next with the many power ranger gimmicks that they might see in the future and you know considering they made morph x keys into a gimmick who knows that if they make their own power ranger series they would make their own gimmick too but with that that's all we got for the gimmick talk um these are pretty essential modern day to keep the viewer engaged with an ever-evolving show thank you so so much esquad for watching this video don't forget to follow me on twitter dino fuego i'm also on instagram not the fuego have a good morning evening afternoon wherever you're at and of course and as always the awesome everybody Right. Peace out. But inside the Megazord cock.